Hey everyone, welcome back to week four. For the past three weeks, we've been diving deep into all the macronutrients. That could be consistent of your protein, your fats, and your carbs. To round everything out, we're gonna go over vitamins and minerals today. On top of that, I'm going to leave you guys with a framework that you can use to figure out the protein you should have daily, the fat you should have daily, and the carbs you should have daily, okay? So for this talk today with vitamins and minerals, we're gonna dive deeper into those fat soluble fi uh, vitamins, those um, water soluble vitamins, a little bit of mineral content as well, um, what you should or shouldn't pair. And then on top of that, just what you can do to improve on your vitamin and mineral content in the form of whole food, not talking about supplementation. All right, so let's just hop right into it. So vitamins and minerals, what are they? They're essential for our bodily functions as we know. Um, they're gonna be essential for your nerve signals as well as carrying nutrients and oxygens via the bloodstream from organ to organ, organ to muscle, all that good stuff. Um, so why are they called micronutrients? They're really only called micronutrients because we need tiny amounts of them. Comparative to something like a gram of protein versus a milligram of vitamins, it's a little bit different, okay? So that's why they're micronutrients, but they still are important aside for them just being micro, all right? Um, what are the differences? So vitamins themselves, they're organic compounds that can be broken down. Our minerals or inorganic compounds that can hold their structure. So do the two interact though? And they do. So what we see is that certain vitamins will help with absorption, but also potentially can disrupt or cause blockings. So for example, vitamin D itself is gonna help with our absorption of calcium from food. Um, if we're gonna use something like vitamin D3 and K2, that's gonna even help our absorption of calcium from food a lot more. If we're gonna combine calcium, magnesium, and zinc, it's gonna help improve upon our absorption of calcium even more, okay? But on top of that, manganese itself can create deficiencies in copper. So we just gotta know what to pair and what not to pair. But again, more often than not, um, we don't have to go super deep into this unless, again, you're consulting with a healthcare professional, which I would 100% advise when it does come to vitamins and minerals. This is a little bit different when we need a little bit more of a metabolic blood panel. So water-soluble vi vitamins, um, these are really the ones that are gonna be absorbed but directly into the bloodstream. These are regulated via your kidneys. Um, they usually use or use <clears throat> these are going to be ones regulated via your kidneys um, they're going to be used to release and produce energy build protein in cells um, and a few other factors so the b vitamins that you usually see with the water soluble vitamins will be biotin folic acid niacin um, riboflavin thiamine vitamin b6 b12 as well as vitamin c all right, fat soluble vitamins are a little bit different. They're gonna be traveling through the body via your lymph channels in the body. So they use proteins as carriers. These guys are gonna help build your bones. They're gonna help protect your vision and the body and et cetera. So like we mentioned in the fat um, content that we did on week two, these are gonna be your vitamins A, D, E, and K. So they can only be absorbed or soluble through the use of fat as well. So again, if you're not having fat in your diet, it's not a good thing. We wanna make sure we have an abundance of it so these vitamins are able to be absorbed and utilized within the body. Um, some of the major minerals that are present in your body um, these are going to be ones that are going to be in larger amounts. So these are going to be your major minerals. Um, they could travel as either a water-soluble or fat-soluble vitamin. So they'll travel within the two of them. So for example, your potassium is going to absorb faster than your calcium. What do they do? So they're gonna maintain your proper fluid balance, okay, so this is something along the lines of your sodium, potassium, your chloride, um, your water intake, all that stuff. It's gonna maintain protein structures, so something like hair, skin, and nails, um, things like that, when we're talking about like collagen, biotin, all those. And then on top of that, we're also gonna help promote healthy bones. So this would be something like your calcium, okay, like we just talked about earlier, your chloride, which helps promote that fluid balance, um, which not a lot of people know about. Magnesium, which is gonna help with our sleep um, a little bit more, help improve that cal absorption of calcium. That's phosphorus, potassium, super vitally important with fluid balance, as long as that sodium as well. And then of course, that's sulfur. A trace minerals are ones that we need in smaller quantities. So minor minerals, if you want to call them, um, but they're just comparative to major minerals. Um, some of them interact with one another. So if we talk about manganese and copper, they're going to be interacting with each other in a negative connotation or negative way. You also have chromium, fluoride, iodine, um, iron, uh, selenium, zinc, you name it. So like I mentioned before, zinc can pair well with the magnesium and calcium, um, as well as iodine is something 
and that can be found in your sodium as well. All right, so those are your trace minerals within your major minerals. Um, breaking this down, I didn't want to get too deep nitty gritty into this because again, I think vitamins and minerals are vitally important, but we want to make sure we take care of the macro portion of what we can control. And then on top of that, that micronutrient content, when it comes to supplementation of adding those things in, it's usually in conjunction of a metabolic blood panel that you do, and your PCP will be the one that's recommending that for you. So I don't wanna take the recommendation or take the professionalism of those PCBs of yourselves. So I want them to be doing those recommendations for you. All I'm talking about is just the general guidelines and gist of what vitamins and minerals are um, and what we can look into them when it comes to improving upon our whole foods that we do eat. So what does this really mean for you? Uh, we know that vitamins and minerals play a part in your hormones. We know that if we have the correct quantities of them, it's gonna be important for our health. And we also know that we should prioritize them um, through whole foods. And then of course, through supplementation when it comes to the recommendation of your healthcare professional. So if you want more information when it does come to this um, and everything else in your diet is working for you, you just wanna improve on something that you are doing, I do recommend consulting that healthcare professional, making sure that they're the first person you reach out to for these, um, then you kind of go from there. So rounding out this week four, I wanted to, before we got into the mindset and the fitness for week five, the sleep, the recovery, I wanted to really get nitty gritty with this nutrition aspect of things. So the fat, the protein, and the carbs. So let's just say we take that same 150 pound individual we've been talking about for a while, all right? And let's just say they have to eat 2,000 calories, which it may or may not be true, to maintain weight. So this 200 calories, 2,000 calories, is gonna be your caloric maintenance. All that caloric maintenance means is that if I eat the same amount of calories daily for seven days, I will stay the same exact weight on day seven. Okay, average-wise everything. So keeping that in mind, let's, work on creating your fat content, your protein content, and your carb content based on these numbers right here. Now, our fat content, as we mentioned before, we want 0.3 to 0.5 of that 150. So let's just say we go down 150 to 0.4. So just like we did on week two, it'll be 150 times 0.4, and that equals 60 grams per day of fat that we should be having. Okay, if we wanna break it down a little bit further, if we went to the same guidelines that we had previously, it would be those 27 grams of saturated fat, and then roughly, it may be a little bit different, but 43 grams made up of our poly and, unsaturated, poly and mono unsaturated fats. Okay, so 60 grams a day. Okay, so what we have to worry about for right now, that's just the um, deeper portion of it. From here, protein. Let's just make it easy for ourselves, okay? We're just gonna do a gram per pound. Okay, we know the recommendations um, can vary depending on sedentary level, physical activity level. Let's just make it easy, okay? You yourself can change whatever you think will be best for you, but let's just make it easy in this sense. So 150 times one, it's gonna 100, equal 150 grams per day of protein, okay? So what we do know is fat is nine cows per gram, and then protein and carbs are four calories per gram, which makes sense because this takes a little bit longer to digest. It's a little bit harder of a makeup, all right? So let's just take that 60 times that nine, which is gonna equal 540, okay? So 540 calories of that 2,000 is coming from fat. Now, if we take that 150 and we multiply it by four, that's gonna equal 600 calories coming from our protein. All right, so now what we do is take that 2,000, we're gonna subtract it by 600, as well as our 540, and that is gonna equal 860 calories. So 860 calories we have left to play with. Well, what do we do with this? Well, we already have our protein, we already have our fat, the two essentials that are very important. We wanna make sure these are good before we think about carbs. All right, so 860 calories divided by that four is gonna equal 215. So 250 grams of carbs are gonna make up our 2,000 calories right here. 
So just like that, you figured out exactly what your macros can be based off of a calorie marker. All right, so again, it's just simple um, equations to get to where we need to be. It's just knowing how to do so. Giving you this framework to do, you input your own numbers, what will work best for you, and then you do it the same exact way, okay? So 250 grams of carbs, 150 grams of protein, and then 60 grams of fat. All right, if we're gonna break this down, those complex carbohydrates should make up consistency of this. Simple carbohydrates, um, again, will be worked around those workout windows or performance-based windows. So let's just say, for example, you just broke this up into four meals, um, roughly about 40-ish grams for the other two meals that you weren't having um, throughout that workout window, and then roughly 60 grams or a little bit more when it comes to the workout windows of the pre and post meal. But when it comes to nutrition, this makes up what you can do yourself to help improve upon being accurate and educated on what works best for your body. You guys have the general gist of what protein, fats, and carbs look like. I would recommend being consistent on the tracking portion of things, okay? If tracking is a little bit not up your speed, um, again, you could do something a little more intuitive. Now for next week, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into that consistency makeup that we talked about in week one. We're gonna talk a little bit about sleep and stress, how we could help optimize that. That could help optimize our feeders of nutrition and help optimize our regulators when it comes to training. But aside from that, it was great speaking to you all today and I look forward to seeing you next week.